Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Jennifer Adelstein, and I am the Marketing Assistant for Industrial Controls. Today's webinar is Boiler Efficiency Improvement Through Linkage List Control, presented by John Graham and Chuck Cuddy of Industrial Controls. The presentation will take about 45 minutes, and after the presentation, we will take some time to answer your questions. During the presentation, feel free to enter your questions into the chat interface on the right-hand side of your screen, and they will be addressed at the end. We will also open it up to voice questions where you can raise your hand and you will be unmuted so you can communicate directly with the speakers. At this time, I'll pass the presentation over to Chuck to get us started. Great. Thank you, Jen. I really appreciate it. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and investing the 45 minutes this morning to learn a little bit about linkage list controls. Um, our goal today is to educate you a little bit and um, uh, help you understand why looking at linkage list controls for your boiler and burner uh, burners are uh, going to be a good thing for you. Um, so with that, what we'll do is get started. Um, today's agenda, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about linkage list controls, um, um, how, how they save energy and how, how they can save you money, um, talking about our linkage list products that we offer at industrial controls here. Uh, we will also be looking at an actual installation from beginning to end so that you can kind of kind of visualize and see how the parts and pieces go together and that might spur some questions for you at the end as well. Um, we're going to talk about some other opportunities that you may have in your boiler room for upgrades or changes or um, um, updates. And uh, we're going to give you a list of questions that you should be thinking about um, that either are going to be asked of you or that you should just be thinking about ready to, ready to offer up if, if this is truly something that you want to look at doing for your, uh, for your boilers and your business. And then finally, as Jen said, the last 10 or 15 minutes we have today, we'll be able to answer some questions that you have. And if it, if it runs over, um, I'll, I'll be happy to, to sit here and answer questions until we're done with it. So uh, without any further ado, we'll, uh, we'll jump into um, what listings, linkage list, oh, sorry. Um, what we'll also be doing today, as we go through our presentation and we get into the, get into the portion of the presentation that talks about the products we carry, we're going to be referencing to our catalog, our reference book. Uh, we had uh, about 35,000 of these catalogs and reference books printed up uh, about a month and a half ago, and we've had them mailed out to customers. Um, so if you have one, feel free to reference to it as we're going through. If you don't have one and would like one, please um, put a, uh, uh, a note in the, um, in the chat that Jen said, or be, feel free to call the 1-800 number and we'll get one sent out to you. Um, the, the part of the book we're talking about and we're going to be playing in today is the combustion area, which is the, the goldish yellow portion at the very top of the catalog. Um, and it's only a sliver of that. So uh, there's a lot of really good information in here for, for your business and for your processes. So if, if you don't have one of these, I really highly recommend that, that you get one as, as, a, as a good reference tool. So, pardon me, we'll uh, move on from here. So we're going to talk about what is parallel positioning. Um, we're going to be discussing um, uh, what, a, what a jack shaft operator, operation is, which is typically how it's done versus um, using separate servos on air and gas. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to, to, to John Graham here to talk a little bit about that. Good morning, all. So the obvious question at this point is, well, what is a linkage and why do I want to be linkageless? And uh, it's a good question that's very appropriate. Here we're looking at a small fire tube boiler from Cleaver Brooks, very common at least in this part of the country. And what you'll see is the, uh, hopefully the mouse is showing up there on your end, but there's an actuator here on the left-hand side of the, uh, the burner dish that responds to the pressure or temperature controller. So of course as your steam pressure falls in the boiler, this actuator responds by operating this push rod, which operates the jack shaft itself. But you'll notice that there is a mechanical takeoff point here for operating the gas control valve. So what happens is as the actuator rotates, 
it causes the jack shaft to rotate, which causes this rod to rise and fall, which ultimately repositions the fuel control butterfly. But in a similar fashion, there is another takeoff point, which to the right operates the rotary air damper. Now, every burner is, is typically different. This one internally has got a concentric sleeve over another sleeve. Oh, sorry, the train's coming through. Uh, and the rotation of these sleeves causes more or less combustion air to pass into the burner. To the right, as we go across, uh, there it is, here it is, there's the mouse. You'll find another quadrant which operates our oil control valves. Now in this case, this boiler's only been arranged for firing natural gas, so although the manufacturer provided those valves, they're not in service. So you can kind of imagine that as this actuator shaft rotates, this rod moves up and down, all these linkages now have to move in harmony with the actuator. But unfortunately, what really happens is two things. There's mechanical hysteresis, because these ball joints wear in time, over here and over here, here and here. And the other thing is that some boilers aren't fitted with characterizable trim. And what that means is you can essentially adjust the fuel flow at every position of the jack shaft so you can maintain a suitable fuel air ratio when you commission the burner. So in this case, it has characterizable trim. Some boilers do not. So what it comes down to is it's very difficult to set up with your combustion analyzer. Certain burner types are. And the second thing is you have to allow enough free excess air to maintain stable and safe clean combustion, even accounting for the fact that the hysteresis exists in the linkage. So right out of the gate, you're starting off with a condition whereby it's less than optimal. If we contrast that to a linkage list system, you'll see a uh, Cleaver, Brooks, uh, Cleaver Brooks boiler again. But here we have a separate servo to operate the rotary air damper. And we have another servo down below on the fuel control valve. Now these servos have very fine positional control accuracy, meaning that they can actually be returned to their initial position within plus or minus a tenth of an angular degree. So essentially we eliminate a lot of the slop in the linkage by going to a linkageless solution. So we look at the old versus the new, on some burners like this Gordon Pyatt model, on the top slide you'll see a tremendous amount of exposed linkage, which is complex in that through time it does wear, but also it's somewhat tedious to set up as contrasted to the linkage of solution below. And on the one below you'll see there is a servo for the fuel control, there's one for the uh, secondary air sleeve, and then there's one for the, the uh, combustion air damper on the back. It's taken advantage of new technology as well that we didn't enjoy 20 years ago and that there was nothing like this at that time. So not only do we get rid of the linkage, make the setup and maintenance a little easier, we also have the ability to repeat the combustion curve year in, year out. Uh, it's, it's very beneficial in minimizing emissions and maximizing efficiency.